Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial and we're going to look at the software of choice for design of experiments called DOE Pro. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and the subject of today's uh, DOE tutorial is how to convert a two-level designed experiment into a three-level designed experiment and how I know that a three-level designed experiment is needed. So what we're going to use is this particular little um, scenario here. So this is from my simulator that I use in class. Uh, the simulation is basically a filling machine and there are four variables here active pressure, inert pressure, flow ratio and nozzle diameter and the thing that we're interested in uh, understanding, thing that we're interested in optimizing is the fill volume uh, in the final product. So if I just switch the, uh, switch the machine on you see it just moving along there and you can see some results for the volume just there so what we're going to do it's four variables so because it's four variables at uh, two levels we are going to do a two to the four full factorial uh, two level DOE um, going to analyze it then we're going to come back and do some confirmation runs and we'll see if a linear model will actually satisfy the the mathematical requirements of this system so on another page, I've already, I've already created the, the two by four. So there it is, sixteen run, full factorial. Uh, of course, standard analysis, analyze design, marginal means plot, both the y hat and the s hat. So the first thing to notice, look, is the inert pressure. The inert pressure should be set down to two in order to keep the standard deviation nice and low so that's something that we're going to adhere to whichever experiment we're doing really but uh, we'll come back and just recheck that a little bit later uh, in terms of driving the the volume well the inert pressure also seems to drive the volume quite strongly um, but um, you also have a situation where um, the active pressure is strong and the flow ratio is strong nozzle diameter is having a small a small effect according to those um, according to that diagram so back to the data back to the analysis analyze design multiple response regression okay now of course what we're going to do is regress the model regress the model down now I'm simply going to look and I'm going to take all of those out those p-values are very high they're certainly all above 0.1 or 0.05. 0.05, a reminder, the p-value will go red. You can see those red p-values higher up. If the p-value is below 0.1, it will go blue. So I'm going to take all of those out. They are all black. They are all too high. Regress. And the BC interaction now has just dropped in. It's gone blue. It's below 0.1 so that looks like it might be the final model although the ac interaction now is uh, is black so i'm just going to take that take that out regress and there we have there we have the completed the completed model i'll do a similar thing over this side i'll start by removing the CD interaction because the coefficient is so small tiny little coefficient regression p-values come alive they've, they've all gone red for some reason so I'm just going to leave that exactly as it's um, as it's come up there so now what I have to do of course is I have to go back to the process and I have to do a confirmation run now in lots of the exercises that you may have done in class with me, the confirmation test was always done at the target. Now I think in this case, 
the target uh, is 28 if I go to the, uh, the capability the capability screen and run the capability let's have a look 28.33 is the current um, average there according to those settings 28.5 is where we want to hit you can see that the standard deviation um, is, is way too is way too big so we have to bring the standard deviation um, down in order to get rid of that 25% um, defect rate you can see there but uh, you can see the target would normally be 28.5 and often when you confirm you try to confirm at the target but of course this doesn't really confirm that the model is a linear model the best place to confirm a model of course is at the center point of all the settings so you can see here look active pressure inerts pressure we've gone 5 to 15 the center point look in the yellow field is 10 now the regression table always defaults to the center points you can see that it's gone 10 4.6 2.5 because that is where we really should do the confirmation test and you can see look that we're not going to hit 28 and a half we're actually going to hit we're actually going to hit 31.2 according to that uh, prediction model now what you would do is go back to the process and you would do confirmation points at those midpoints 10 4.6 2.5 now in reality I've already done that I've got the I've got the data sitting here look here are the, the, the six confirmation tests that I've done now what we're going to do is the formal way of testing whether the model is linear or not just by eyeballing this data it was supposed to land at 31 and just by eye you can kind of see that uh, your landing um, well above 31 constantly so that's not a good sign in and of itself but we're going to show you the formal way to do this so I'm going to go Sigma Zone I'm going to go Modify Design and it said Add Rows now effectively what I've got is two additional rows of data so instead of 16 rows of data I'm going to turn that up to 18 what does that do? well it puts the space in there look and now it's waiting for me to tell it where did you test well I tested at 10 4 point 0.6 and 2.5 so we test it, let's put it in again 10 4 point 0.6 2.5 so now what I can do I can copy and paste those confirmation points in ok so that's what I've done now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the computer to generate let me go on the, the correct regression table the, the finished model if I sit on there it will use this model now I'm going to go back to the software and I'm going to ask it to generate the residual sheet and here's the residual now what the residuals are is the difference between what the model would predict I'm going to hit and what we actually hit and the the residuals have been calculated for every data point not just the confirmation test but they've been they've been calculated so what the model will do now is it will look back and it will say well okay for that first set of 5, 2, 0.5 and 2 here where did I predict I would land where did I actually land and it will do that for every data point and it will calculate the difference and the difference is known as a residual okay so we've done that now what I want to do is plot a graph of the residuals so if I go residual analysis residual plots and it says which sheet do you want to use so I want to use the residual sheet page and what I'm going to get it to do look I'm going to go active pressure as one of the, the factors 
and the output on this graph I'm going to ask it to plot the residual values the difference between the predicted and the actual and then I'm going to say create chart and I'm going to click done I'm just going to blow that up so we can see it a little bit there we go now what you can see look is a cluster on the left hand side where we set to the low a cluster on the right hand side where we set to the high so there's the 5 and the 15 now if this model was a straight line if this model was linear the midpoints of course would be sitting spread around that line also not necessarily 50 50 there's only six of them not necessarily 50 50 but there should be some points um, low and high and what you can see is we've got this we've effectively got this curve look to what's gone on now that is telling us that active pressure is not a linear relationship to the response it has a curve in it it has a quadratic in it so now what we have to do is build a three level experiment and I've already created a three level experiment and let me show you what I've been able to do this experiment that you're looking at on the screen is known as a central composite design it's a central composite face design and I've built this model now and it already contains all the tests that we've already done so even if I hadn't have done this test if I'd gone straight to this whoops if I'd gone straight to this uh, DOE let's just delete that like that the first thing it would have asked me to have done in the top 16 rows is a two by two is a two by four sorry full factorial it would have asked me to do a two level doe now we've already done that it then would have asked me to do center points the confirmation points were done at the center so in other words all of that data all of that data um, would have already have been asked for and it is already available so we haven't wasted the two level work that we've done so far now what we need to do is to go and run the last seven eight rows and fill in the data that's missing if I just shut this down and I'll open it back up again you will see that actually the central composite is there and completed so imagine I've gone back to the process I've collected those last seven rows and now I've populated all the data so what have I done so far I ran a two level DOE then I tested it at the midpoint those first 18 data points in this pattern therefore have already been run what I then did I went to Sigma zone I went create design computer aided selected three level and selected a four factor central composite design I then pasted my original data from my first test first 18 rows into the top of that pattern and I went and collected the bottom data portion now what I have is the three level DOE waiting to be analyzed now what do I do exactly what I did before analyze design marginal means plot both the Y hat and the S hat. Let's take a look at this. What does it look like? Quadratic on that active pressure for standard deviation. There's the strong quadratic look on the active pressure for the mean. There's a strong quadratic on the nozzle diameter. 
The inert pressure, by the way, is still pretty much linear. It's a little bit of curvature there, and, and of course it's still telling me that you should get the inert pressure down to 2 in order to reduce the standard deviation. So we'll keep that in mind as we do the regression. Now, analyze design. Multiple response regression. Remove the p-values that are nice and high. Let's get rid of these things. Sigma zone. Analyze design. Regression. Let's get rid of the AC. Okay, let's tidy up the standard deviation model now. So just a reminder, I'm going to do the interactions first because if a variable appears in an interaction, even if it's not important itself, like active pressure here, if active pressure appears in an interaction, and it's in the AD interaction for instance, then it has to remain. So I've not dealt with the main effects yet in this model. I'm just going to regress down. All those quadratics can go by the look of it out of this portion. Let's get rid of those. Okay, what we got left. So D appears in interactions. C appears in interactions and A appears in interactions. So they've got to stay. So that's that's as small as that model. That's as small as that model is going to go. And now of course what am I going to do? Well I'm going to ask it. To, to hit the target essentially. So I'm gonna go sigma zone, graphs and optimization, multiple response optimizer. I don't want it to move away from two on inert pressure because inert pressure controls the standard deviation for me. I'm gonna go equals two here and the target is 28.5. Add constraint, optimize, settings to worksheet. What does that thing say? Well, it says 5.78. I'm going to round that up to 5.8, by the way. I, I don't think I can hit 5.78, so I'm going to round that up to 0.8. Uh, the flow ratio is 0.53. I'm going to round that up. And the nozzle diameter is 29995, so I'm going to round that up to 3. Now, why have I done all that? Well, because now it's giving me a proper, it's giving me a proper value for where we expect the test run to land. It's, it's, I've now told it the truth. I couldn't do all those little fractional settings, so I've told it the truth of where I'm really going to set the machine, which is 5.8. Two, five point eight, two, five point three, and three, and I'm going to go back to the machine. I'm looking for twenty-eight point three eight. I'm going to go back to the process now. Let's have a look. When am I setting this? Five point eight. Five point eight. Doll is down to two. Point five three and three. Clear the previous result. Generate a hundred. Now I'm expecting to hit what's twenty-eight point three and I've hit twenty-eight point one one. So I'm pretty much where they expect it to be. And there is the confirmation run. Now if I hadn't have done that, I'd have been expecting to hit twenty-eight point five. I'd have been off centre a little bit. Uh, I mean I'm not exactly where the predictor said, but um, at least I understand one of the reasons why I'm to the left is because I, I've, I can only put rounded settings into this machine. Um, but there's the confirmation test. This three level model is now working fine. So we are within point two, whereas I think when we did the original DOE, let's take a look. Um, let's go back. 
back to my confirmation points. Remember, I was going to hit 31, and look, I'm three and four points away. Now I'm just 0.2 away. So the, 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 the three level model, the curved model is working so much better. So just a reminder, how did I do this? Two level DOE, confirmation at the center points, then build a three level DOE, collect the extra data, collect the extra data, create a curved model, and then confirm the curved model. The way I confirmed that the linear model wasn't uh, linear was to test the center points and then generate a residual sheet and to plot the residuals. And that was how I found out. Two level to three level uh, model building using DOE Pro. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.